Got a treat for you today, a roundup of six ASRock X870, X870E motherboards for AMD Socket AM5. Just look! £200. £238. £260. £340. £390. And top of the stack. £443. So let's take a look at these six motherboards and see what you get up at this end of the range, as opposed to the lower end of the market. First up we have this X870 Pro RS priced at a penny under £200 including VAT here in the UK. As you can see it's got a colour scheme that's black with silver and white so it's quite fitting for a white build but it's not a pure snow effect. In terms of accessories some SATA cables and also an M.2 screw, in other words the absolute bare minimum. Clearly we're looking here at very few extras, but despite that there are a few features to see. So the primary M.2 has a quick release feature, and on the I.O. panel we do have a BIOS flashback. But in terms of glitz, that's pretty much it. For example there's no postcode debug, there are no micro buttons on board. Technically, however, it's fairly competent. Let's start by tackling some ASRock terminology. Their names for M.2 slots, so Gen 5 by 4 are called Blazing M.2. We've got one of those. We have one Hyper M.2, that's a Gen 4 by 4. And we have one Ultra M.2, that's a Gen 3 by 4. The VRMs are perfectly sound, they're 14 by 80 amps plus 2 plus 1 Dr. Moss, and the pair of heat sinks on the VRMs look perfectly capable. Memory support, we've got four DIMMs of DDR5 and you can overclock to 8000, provided the memory can take it and the process is good for it. PCI Express expansion, we have one Gen 5 by 16 and one Gen 4 by 16. We've already covered the storage. When it comes to input output, we've got two and a half gigabit ethernet, but we don't have any Wi-Fi. We have two USB 4s rated at 40 gigabits per second, or two USB A's rated at 10 gigabits per second, an internal header USB-C 20 gigabits per second for front panel connection. Another internal header handles two USB A's rated at 5 gigabits per second, and we have two of those USB A's on the rear I.O. In total, there are nine USB 2s, six on the rear I.O., and three, bizarrely, on the front I.O. The form factor of this motherboard is ATX. You don't get a backplate, not that we'd really expect it at this price point. And pretty much my only question about this motherboard, apart from the bizarre USB 2 headers, 2 plus 1, that's very strange, is why is it called Pro? It doesn't really seem to be much about this board that is Pro. It looks to me like a perfectly solid X870 budget motherboard for people who don't want to spend too much money when they're buying a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 processor. So, a decent start to our roundup. Stepping up in price to £238, including VAT in the UK, we have this X870 Steel Legend Wi-Fi. Aesthetically, the Steel Legend looks very similar to the Pro RS we just looked at. You can see the colour scheme is almost identical. You get a couple more accessories in the box. So in addition to the SATA cables, you get a couple of Velcro straps. You get antennae for the Wi-Fi 7, but they're very regular stick type antennae a thermal sensor, and a single keycap with the Steel Legend logo. However, while the M.2 storage, for example, looks the same as the Pro OS, it is not. It is slightly improved. We have one Gen 5 slot under the quick release cover, but under this screwed down heatsink, we have two Gen 4s rather than a Gen 4 and a Gen 3. The familiar parts with the Steel Legend are the 14 by 80 amp plus 2 plus 1 Dr. Moss VRMs with enlarged aluminium heat sinks, and we have support for four DIMMs of DDR5 memory rated at 8000 plus provided you overclock. PCI Express expansion, we still have one Gen 5 by 16 slot and one Gen 4 by 16. We have support for three M.2 SSDs, the Gen 5 has a quick release heat sink, while the two Gen 4 
fours are covered by a screw down heatsink. We also have four SATA 6 gigabit per second connectors. For networking, we have two and a half gigabit ethernet, and we also have MediaTek 2x2 Wi-Fi 7. On the I.O. panel, we have two USB 4s rated at 40 gigabits per second, and we have two USB A's rated at 10 gigabits per second. We also have three USB A's rated at five gigabits per second, and internal headers for a USB C rated at 20 gigabits per second, and a further four USB A's at five gigabits per second. USB 2 support, a total of eight ports, four on the rear I.O., and four internal headers. In other words, the hardware is absolutely acceptable. We've got support for a decent amount of storage, we've got PCI Express expansion both Gen 5 and Gen 4, and a decent array of fan headers. While the Steel Legend packs no particular special features, it offers the decent foundation for a gaming PC. We move on to the Phantom Gaming X870 Riptide Wi-Fi, which sounds completely different to the Steel Legend, but as you'll discover, it has a fair amount in common. Apart from the Phantom Gaming branding, and the swish purple colouring, and here we have a kind of iridescent look on the heat sinks over the VRMs and also the chipset. But we're still talking about an ATX form factor and X870 rather than X870E. In the box we have a few more accessories. We have a rather more chunky Wi-Fi 7 antennae. We have this ARGB splitter cable, so that's one female there and three males there for connecting to multiple RGB devices. A thermal sensor cable and two SATA cables. We also have a different keycap. Clearly, this is the Phantom Gaming branding. But the motherboard itself, quite familiar. One quick release heatsink over the Gen 5 SSD. A screw down heatsink over two more M.2s. We have support for four DIMMs of DDR5 up to 8000, one PCI Express Gen 5 by 16, one PCI Express Gen 4 by 16. And when we remove all the heatsinks, we can see the hardware underlying is also quite familiar. The VRMs have the same rich tech controller as the previous two models, and we have the 14 by 80 amps plus 2 plus 1 configuration that has become familiar. We can see the layout of the M.2s and the PCI Express is familiar, and on the rear I.O. we have 2.5 gigabit killer Ethernet and MediaTek 2x2 Wi-Fi 7. For the rear I.O. we have two USB 4s rated at 40 gigabits per second, two USB A's rated at 10 gigabits per second, three USB A's rated at 5 gigabits gigabits per second, internal headers for a USB-C rated at 20 gigabits per second, and headers for four more USB-A's rated at 5 gigabits per second. A total of eight USB-2s, four on the back, and internal headers for four on the front, and we have six PWM connectors. In other words, stepping up from £238 for the Steel Legend to £260 for this Riptide Wi-Fi, it gets you a spiffy name, it gets you a different aesthetic, and it gets you a different Wi-Fi 7 antennae. But apart from that, they're basically the same. Phantom Gaming X870E Nova Wi-Fi, priced at £340 here in the UK, so we're now north of £300. And as you can see on the box, we have some RGB here in this cover over the VRM heatsink. And this is a hefty board. We've got a bunch of things going on. For example, we've got the first back plate in this roundup. We have a number of accessories in the box, starting with a freestanding Wi-Fi 7 antennae, a number of thermal sensors, two packs of SATA cables, another of those triple-headed ARGB cables so you can connect one port to multiple devices, and another of the Phantom Gaming keycaps. Although the Nova Wi-Fi uses the X870E chipset, the form factor is still ATX rather than EATX, and you can see we have a rather nifty aesthetic going across the board. When it comes to the hardware and the features, we have an onboard debug display, we have onboard micro buttons, we also have micro buttons on the rear I.O. When it comes to DIY features that make life easier when you're building a PC, we have an easy release lever for the graphics card, and we also have a quick release heatsink on the main M.2. However, the other three M.2s are hidden away under these covers, which are screwed down. And with all the heat sinks removed, we can see the VRMs are now a 20 by 110 amp plus two plus one setup. 
and the heat sinks over those VRMs are quite extensive. Memory support is slightly stepped up from the previous motherboards. We've got four DIMMs of DDR5. They're now rated at 8200, provided you overclock. PCI Express expansion. We have a PCI Express Gen 5 by 16, a Gen 3 by 1, and a Gen 3 by 16. For M.2 storage, we have the main Gen 5, three Gen 4 M.2s, and one Gen 3 M.2, plus four SATA 6 gigabit per second. For networking, we have five gigabit Realtek Ethernet, and we have MediaTek 2x2 Wi-Fi 7. Other ports and connectors, we have two USB 4s rated at 40 gigabits per second, three USB A's rated at 10 gigabits per second, a total of seven USB A's rated at five gigabits per second, three on the rear with internal headers for four more. There's also a header for USB C rated at 20 gigabits gigabits per second and we have six USB 2s that's two at the rear and four at the front. When it comes to cooling we have the back plate to help thermals. We have four fan headers at the foot of the board and three at the top. There's a decent array of features. The price is reasonable but getting expensive and the looks you can't really argue with those. Looks absolutely great. So the question has to be what do you get with the Tai Chi light? and the full-on Tai Chi. Priced at £443, including VAT here in the UK, we have the X870E Tai Chi Lite. In essence, this is the Tai Chi full fat, but without many of the DIY features. But under the surface, this is a full-on Tai Chi at a slightly reduced price. In the box, we have a number of accessories, but we've seen these already. We've got the full-on Wi-Fi 7 antennae. We've got the three-way RGB splitter cable, SATA cables, thermal sensors, and now we have a Tai Chi keyboard cap. There are three points of differentiation that immediately jump out between this Tai Chi light and the X870E Nova Wi-Fi. It's E80X in form factor, it has two Gen 5 expansion slots, and they're both times 16. You can forget about uh, Gen 3 or Gen 4. And the other thing is, once we remove the heat sinks, we have 24 stages of VRMs for the CPU. Specifically, 24 by 110 amps with the same Renesas controller that we saw on the Phantom Gaming Nova Wi Fi, and that's plus two plus one. The heat sinks on the VRMs continue to be large and impressive, but they are still passively cooled. Memory support, four different of DDR5 8200 plus if you overclock. For storage, this Gen 5 M.2 has a quick release heatsink, but the rest are all screwed down, both here and here. We have one Gen 4 M.2 with an extended heatsink and two Gen 4 M.2s with a regular flat heatsink. We also have six SATA 6 gigabit per second connectors. For networking, we have five gigabit Realtek Ethernet and we have MediaTek 2x2 Wi-Fi 7. For input output, we have the two expected USB 4s rated at 40 gigabits per second and we have five USB A's rated at 10 gigabits per second. There are seven USB A's rated at five gigabits per second, three on the rear I.O. and internal headers for four on the front. There's also an internal header for a USB-C rated at 20 gigabits per second. We have support for six USB 2s, two on the rear, four on the front. Fan support, we have eight PWM connectors in total, four at the foot of the board, one in the center, three at the top. We have a debug display, we have micro buttons, and on the rear I.O. we have more micro buttons. So all the hardware is in place, but features such as the screwed down M.2 covers and the absence of a backplate are clear signs of how ASRock has gone about saving cost. But when it comes to the full-on Tai Chi, ASRock has really gone for it. We step up from £390 for the Tai Chi Lite to £443, including VAT, for the full-on X870E Tai Chi. And isn't that just an understated box? However, when we go to the back, we get a hint that there is some RGB on this motherboard. The bare specification of the full-on Tai Chi is identical to the Tai Chi Lite. So you've got dual PCI Express 5 slots, uh, one Gen 5 M.2, three Gen 4 M.2s, and obviously the VRMs, which are a huge part of the deal, are also identical. It's the extras where we have some difference. We have a backplate. 
which is quite extensive. We have a heat pipe connecting the two heat sinks on the VRMs together. We have active cooling inside the main heat sink. We have the easy release mechanism to help you remove and install your graphics card. Beyond that, it's a question of taste and style. You're paying 400 and something pounds for this Tai Chi. The Tai Chi Lite comes in at 390 pounds, or you could spend 340 pounds on the Phantom Gaming X870 E Nova Wi-Fi, 260 pounds on the Phantom Gaming X870 Riptide Wi-Fi, 238 pounds on the X870 Steel Legend Wi-Fi, or a mere 200 pounds on the X870 Pro RS. Clearly, we haven't tested or reviewed any of these six motherboards, but no doubt a review will be coming soon. Don't forget, we're kitguru.net on the web, and we're on TikTok.